Welcome to First Time for Everything, a podcast for curious people. I'm your host, Danny Elliott. I've toured the world as a backing vocalist for some of the biggest names in music, owned a prop rental business, ran a vintage boutique out of a camper that I renovated, and I've had a lot of firsts in my life. I created this podcast in hopes of inspiring you to take a chance on something you've been wanting to try for the first time. We're going to discover a lot of really cool stuff together, and I'm so happy you're here. Welcome back, first timers. I am so excited to bring you today's episode. I'm talking with entrepreneur, world traveler, journaling queen, and polyglot Joe Franco. I've been following Joe on the social meds for a few years now and have always wanted to talk with her just in general. She's got that most interesting woman in the world vibe going on, but specifically, I wanted to talk with her about being multilingual, also known as a polyglot. Joe speaks, get ready for it, eight languages. Let's just have a moment for that. Eight freaking languages. As a lifelong traveler and touring musician, I have always tried to learn a bit of the language of the places I've traveled to, but I'm usually never in a place long enough to experience full immersion or really retain what I've learned. So Joe's language diversity is especially impressive to me from a learning and retention standpoint. She is doing so many incredible things, and I think you're going to admire her just as much as I do. I know you're going to enjoy First Time Learning a Language with Joe Franco. Women's health is extremely important to me, and I think modern fertility is one of the most exciting, accessible new advancements to come out in recent years to help us really understand our bodies more. Whether you're ready to pop out a mini-me like yesterday or the thought of being someone's parent after the night you had last night seems light years away, knowledge is power. Understanding how our bodies work to better be able to prepare for the future and take better care of ourselves right now is game-changing. Modern Fertility doesn't just offer fertility testing. It also offers birth control, prenatal vitamins, ovulation and pregnancy tests, and just launched a sperm kit because fertility isn't just a woman's job, okay? So click the link in the show notes for $10 off your Modern Fertility hormone test and join the thousands of women who refuse to let fertility be a mystery. Now, back to the show. Joe Franco, thank you so much for being on First Time for Everything today. I'm so excited to have you here. I've been following you for a while, and I think I was first introduced to you by your Netflix show, and I was like, this girl loves to travel. I need to keep up with her and get some good travel tips, and then realized you were a very accomplished polyglot, um, and I just think that's so incredible. So uh, we're going to talk about first time learning a new language today, although you have a lot of new languages that you've learned. So Give the people a list of all the things you're fluent in. <laughs> oh my God. It's always like, what day are we talking about? Some days you wake up and you're feeling more fluent. <laughs> Other days, not so much. But so English is actually my second language because I was born in Brazil. So I really shouldn't be speaking English. And I always find that fascinating that you can be born in a place where you don't speak anything other than that language and then you move somewhere and then next thing you know your life is really predominantly in the secondary language so that happened to me so I learned Portuguese when I was a kid and then grew up in the states so around five six seven I learned English and saw that it was a superpower as a kid honestly I just wanted to get out of school like any reason for me to get pulled out of class was a good thing and when I started learning English they would put me in ESL classes English as a second language and then once I did learn English I would get pulled out of class again to translate for the new kids so I was like hell yeah like this is my jam and it just felt like a superpower because I was like I was more important than the teachers who were adults even though I was a seven-year-old kid and I saw that I was like, wow, really, when you're talking about language, you're talking about this ability to help people that surpasses age, that sur surpasses, you know, diverse qualifications. It just cuts right through everything because we communicate at the baseline, like we need language. So then I was hooked and I learned French in school, uh, which is 
to be honest, just high school French. But then I actually studied my butt off and went to France and became fluent in French and made several hundred videos in French, which helped me master that. And then I wanted to learn Italian because Italian wasn't as useful. So I found it interesting because I just wanted to do it. It wasn't for a resume. It wasn't for a degree. So then I started learning Italian and fell in love with not only Italian, but an Italian. So then I quickly, quickly learned. And then when I started making YouTube videos, my first partnership was unpaid, but it was a Spanish language school that sent me to Mexico, Costa Rica, and Ecuador to learn Spanish. And so I had to learn Spanish because it was my job at this point, my unpaid job, but still one hell of an opportunity. So I learned Spanish within the first four months. And then I, I like stopped learning languages for several years, started my journaling company, realized how important language was to me from one of my sessions that I was hosting for members. Then I booked like 20 hours of Egyptian Arabic classes and started learning Egyptian Arabic. And then I fell in love with that. And then I started learning Greek. And now I read and write and speak in Greek. And now I'm learning Dutch, uh, Flemish, really, because I am dating a Belgian guy who speaks Dutch. So those are all my languages. Well, you'll have to give me some tutoring lessons in Dutch for um, when we move to Amsterdam. Or I can join your 21-day language uh, course, which I actually signed up for yesterday because I need to get my life together for that. Oh, yeah. That is so impressive. Did you feel like once you learned English as a kid, do do you feel like that kind of set you up for being able to more quickly kind of download these languages? Or did you feel like it still felt, I don't know, for me, it feels difficult because I don't know, in, in the States, if you're not in like a, I don't know, at least where I grew up, if you're not in like a private school, you don't start learning languages until you're maybe junior high. If you're lucky, definitely high school. And I feel like at that point, it's a bit harder than when you're kind of under the age of eight and you're just kind of like soaking everything in. But did you feel like because you were able to learn English at an early age, it set you up to learn other languages more quickly? So this is when it gets interesting, like neuroscientifically, obviously I'm not a neuroscience, but there are studies that show that younger kids do grasp language faster. And when you think about the toddlers in your life or, you know, your, your nieces, and nephews, they're picking up language. They don't know grammar. They don't know what vocab is yeah. and they're picking up language. So whether it's to say that some of us have a natural aptitude, we grasp language faster, or just the fact that when you're younger, you're a sponge. I think both are very true. What I think learning language as a five-year-old, learning English as a five-year-old did for me was show me the difficulties and show me the rewards sooner. And when I had less ego, Mm. because as an adult, we don't want to make mistakes. We don't want to mess up. We don't want to sound dumb. And when you're a kid, it doesn't matter because you're a kid, you're making mistakes. So if anything, I don't really think that from the skill set, that it made it easier for me to absorb language as a skill in the sense of like grammar, vocab, rules. But it was more of an attitude about learning language and learning anything that sealed into my five-year-old brain that basically told me whenever you learn something, it will be ugly before it gets pretty. It will be painful. And even now, as I'm learning Dutch, it reminds me a lot of the time that I first learned English. Because when I first learned English, it was the first language I had ever learned. Didn't sound like Portuguese at all didn't have anything in, it was completely new. And then once I started learning French and Italian and Spanish, it was so similar to Portuguese because it's Latin. Mm. So then, and then when I learned Greek, it was completely different, completely different, different alphabet, whatever, all of it's different. But, you know, when you learn a language that's completely different, it's the same pain. I will call it a pain, but it's a beautiful pain because it's a growing pain. It's like you yeah. feel like you'll never make any progress. And it's it's not like going to the gym. I was listening to a podcast on Huberman Lab. And basically the whole point of the conversation was that language learning is very different than anything else that we do in terms of like building. Because when you go to the gym, you feel your muscles growing. You see gains over the days. When you learn a language, it's basically like you're failing, you're failing, you're failing. And then one day you wake up and you remember stuff. And it takes one hell of of a driven person and somebody who's resilient 
to continue because language learning is so hard. Yeah. I mean, on, on that tip as well, like I feel like a lot of people may feel intimidated or overwhelmed at the thought of learning a new language. What advice do you have for people who really want to learn something but are but have maybe a little bit of that ego where it's like, I don't want to sound stupid? And, you know, what, what tips do you give people to kind of get beyond that? You will never learn if you're too worried about sounding dumb because in order to become fluent, you must fail. And if anything, it's like yeah. the failure becomes redefined as a good thing because the more mistakes you make, the quicker you are moving towards your fluency. And so this is why I look at language learning as bigger than just learning a language. This is a lifestyle shift. It humbles you. Language learning is one of those few things in our adult lives that puts us back down to square one and brings us literally back to toddler level of communication. And that's humbling. And then it also makes you empathetic when you meet somebody who can't speak the language. Right. And I think that's what, what is addicting to me. It's like every language that I learn, I can help more people be understood and I can help more people not feel this horrible feeling of being unable to express themselves because I can translate. Mm, it's so funny. So you're like kind of perfectly just leading into the questions that I had set up for you. So thank you for making my job easy because one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, what do you feel like, I'm sure you've had a lot of these because you have learned so many languages, but like, is there a particular experience that kind of stands out in your mind of something that you were only able to experience because you had learned a new language? Oh my God, like everything in my life. it's It's been beautiful moment after beautiful moment. I always just love being able to connect to people who I would never be able to connect to had I not learned the language. And there are examples of this across the board from my Italian lover, still a dear friend of mine, <laughs> to, you know, a French fling, still a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. to like the Greek mother that still texts me till this day in Greek who I had dinner with and we were communicating in Greek, me, her Google translate. It was like the best dinner, you know, we're cackling. And then they drive me to the airport, her and her sister. And then I'm just like completely enveloped in this love that I wouldn't have access to without language. So it's, it's not only for my personal joys, but then of course, when I can introduce other people to each other, whether it's from people who join a Joe Club challenge or join me on, in an event or buy my book or whatever it is, like I can connect global thinkers and people who speak different languages and kind of multiply this effect of empathy and understanding. I love that so much. It, it totally does shift how you relate to other people, whether you encounter people who aren't English speakers in the States or like when you go to other places and you're like, please be patient with me. And I remember I had a tour in Japan years ago and I had to sing everything in Japanese. And so I had to like phonetically learn all of the lyrics and but by doing that and by doing some like duolingo prep i like learned some very basic japanese which i have not retained at all but i just remember every all of my like japanese colleagues were just so gracious with me and if just i think they were just grateful that i was even trying to just like be there and i think that speaks to your point of connection of people just see the effort that you're putting in whether it's someone trying to learn English or you trying to learn a different language and um, it definitely connects you I think much more quickly because I, I think most people hopefully feel some kind of empathy for that process you know yeah sure. there's that layer of respect too especially as Americans the world does not look at American tourists in a positive light let's be honest because a yeah. lot of American tourists show up and they're acting like everybody needs to bend over backwards speaking English. So the minute that you can break the stereotype of the ignorant tourist and you show up and you have the basic decency to say, thank you, you're welcome. How are you in the local language? Your respect will be much greater, but not only for your personal benefit, you will genuinely show your curiosity. And I think that's yeah. what's missing when we think about travel. You know, like if you're, if you're a tourist, you're likely not going to learn anything. You're just going to show up, go to the resort and go home. If you're a traveler, then I think that it's a big piece of the puzzle to learn basic language. You're not going to be fluent in Japanese in a week, but you could show up and know how to say the basics. Totally. Yeah. Ja Japanese is so hard. 
<laughs> but really fun. It's a very like I'm I'm very into ASMR and there's this channel of this girl. It's all Japanese and she goes and gets like um, like facials done and it's so calming just the way that like they flip certain like consonants and stuff. It's very musical to me. But yeah, not gonna learn Japanese in a week. On that tip. Do you have tips for people? Do you have tricks that you kind of use to help you retain language once you start learning it? Because again, it's been like 10 years since I was in Japan and there is like, I have maybe like three words that have stuck. So, I mean, we got, we got a whole two month course here on this question because it's not easy. I've actually made a course called the, the time mastery toolkit of like, how do you look at your life, look at your interest and optimize it for learning and retention. And there's a whole section there about memory. So it really, really comes down to you and your personal interests. If I tell you what works for me, nine times out of 10, it's not going to work for you because you're different. What you consume is different. Your passions are different. So this is why when somebody's giving blanketed, like, do use this tool, use that tool. It's like the number one thing they should have said before they told you about the tools this is good for auditory learners. This is good for visual learners. This is good for kinesthetic learners. Mm -hmm. So it's like knowing your learning style because your learning style goes back to the beginnings of how you learn. From a young kid, I always learn through listening, always. Like I can memorize rap lyrics really quickly. And I've always learned through doing. I haven't learned so much through memorizing, through like flashcards and things like that. I'm not so visual. I don't need visual graphs of things. So knowing that I know knowing that I learn quickly in the categories of listening and doing things, that's how I'm going to cultivate my learning plan. And then that means mm -hmm. like listening to podcasts, listening to music, listening to audio lessons like Pimsleur, being kinesthetic. Maybe it's playing a game. The gamified apps are hit or miss, but for me, it works because I like to be doing something or literally playing a board game in the language or being out and about and like taking a tour in the language, doing a workout class in the language. These are all things that work for me. So when it comes to learning anything, but specifically language, ask yourself, how do you learn? And then based on what you've realized, because it comes back to like, when you were a kid, how did you learn? Was it what stuck in your brain and through what method of teaching? And then how can you translate that to your language practice? That's such a good point. Because I think sometimes I'll feel like guilty if I can't remember something, if I can't just memorize something. I'm like, oh, I should be able to do this. Why can't I just memorize this? But then we, we bought a property in Mexico and we're going to be spending a lot more time down there. And I'm like, man, I really need to work on my Spanish. Like it is not nearly conversational and um i've been trying to get out of the guilt of like if i can't memorize words like you know that's okay but listening to music more often that's in spanish or just turning the radio on to a spanish station and just even not even necessarily trying to like fully translate but just let my brain like absorb the sound of it and then at some point i know that i will get more into like the nitty gritty of verbs adjectives nouns all the things but that's a great tip to remember like how do you learn most effectively and have fun with it too mm -hmm. yeah I feel like yeah. when we're learning in school it's so dusty and it's a one-size-fits-all approach because it's hard to teach a classroom of 30 kids in their own individual unique learning styles it's impossible for a teacher so I empathize with teachers but as an adult learner to be as efficient as possible it's it's self-studying it's like you need to learn how you learn and that helps with everything and also just sharing your process. I think when you share it online, I always recommend for people to start study grams, like create an Instagram account just for your studies. I might have to do that, to be honest, like just posting progress reports of what's happening in the language. Because if you're sharing it, you have an accountability circle. And even if you only have one follower, it doesn't even matter. Maybe it's like your, your family or friend. You just know that that's your blank canvas space for you to track your progress and when you start seeing progress you will be more motivated and you will want to continue for sure I love that idea of starting a study gram do you have like a goal number of languages that you want to learn or is it just like you don't you decide to learn a language because you're just feeling inspired to learn that specific language I've never been like a list keeper not in where I travel and not in my languages and I honestly didn't even realize I spoke I think I speak eight or nine languages and I like, I don't even know if it's eight or nine. Like, hold on. English, Portuguese, French, Spanish, Italian, Greek, Egyptian, Arabic, 
Dutch and Dutch is like a work in progress. So I think I speak eight languages unless I'm missing one. And when I learned that, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. I'm so close to 10. That's so cool. I want to get to 10. But again, like what's the point in learning a bunch of languages if it all falls out of your brain? So it's not just about learning the languages to say that I've learned it once in my life, but I still listen to Greek music. I still speak to friends, you know, abroad that speak these languages. I think that is more important. It's cultivating that global lifestyle where these languages really are a part of my life as opposed to just having the bragging rights. Sure. Quality over quantity. Yeah. And using the language for what it's supposed to be used for, which is connecting to people. For sure. Let's talk about your 21 day language challenge and fluentish. So I'd love to share those two things and also any other tools that you suggest as well. I think you're talking about your, uh, is it the time mastery toolkit as well in combination with those things? So whatever, whatever tools you want to talk about to help people get the language in the brain. Help the people. So yes, I'm very excited because language has been a part of my DNA. And, and again, it's bigger than just learning language to me. It's about self-expression. It's about confidence. It's about empathy and building that resilience to fail over and over again. Beyond that though, I started my journaling company joke club about three years ago. And it's a company that brings people together on a weekly basis, multiple times a week to journal in the name of growth. So it's like an accountability partner and a mental gym for you to creatively floss out ideas. So I've been doing that for three years and always learning languages. And then a publisher approached me about two years ago and they were like, Joe, we, they, they run this huge brand called teach yourself. Like anytime you go to a bookstore and you go to the language section, teach yourself is basically the, the brand that's like reputable and has been around for years. They wanted to launch a journal for language learning. And I'm like, oh my God, I love journaling in a different language. And I could totally design a journal for language learners. So in comes Fluentish, which is a juicy journal that I've designed, designed internally with different sections of all of the things that, that really create like a holistic language learning journey, anything from setting habit, having a habit tracker, setting goals, rewards, and then the actual sections on how to take notes more effectively, like how to start questioning the things that you're learning through science-backed note-taking methods. And then I have, of course, the verb charts that you could fill in, grammar lists, uh, resource lists. So this journal, if anything, I made it selfishly because I've always wanted something like this that is an all-encompassing resource. So it doesn't matter if you're learning on podcasts or learning on YouTube channels or learning with a textbook, you can still use Fluentish. And at the back, the best part is that there's the prompt section. And I created prompts for beginners, intermediates, and advanced learners, like interesting, juicy questions that you will answer in your target language. And this is the glue because when you start answering a basic question, like what do you do for work in Spanish? You realize, oh my God, I've been studying for six months. I can't even answer a basic question because I'm missing key things of this language. So then you start filling in the blanks. And then in the journal section, it's not only entries so that you can fill out with your answers, but then I want you to pull out vocab that you learn, grammar that you learn so you could practice it in the other sections. So it's a kind of journal that you flip back and forth. There are three little bookmarks. So it's a, it's a workbook. It's really like your personal language workbook. So that's Fluentish and it's in pre-order now. It'll be out in November around the world in bookstores. Two at least for Spanish and Dutch. So <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing too. I'm like, I need eight of these. I literally need eight of these. And the whole thinking behind it is like, you become a different person with every language that you learn because the language you have access to is different. The way of thinking becomes different. So that's fun. And then I created the 21 day language challenge, which is a journaling challenge for language learners. That's basically like a video version of Fluentish, but 21 days of consecutive prompts. And it was so fun to make because I had to think like, okay, I'm a beginner. What questions are easy enough for you to answer there? And then also I'm, I'm an advanced student. What are the harder questions for me to answer. And so every single day of the challenge has a mild prompt for beginners, a spicy prompt for advanced. And both of those prompts follow a topic of the day. And then there's a challenge. So something super interactive, like a scavenger hunt 
like go online, find a YouTube channel, comment in the language, share it in the chat. And then there's a T T L D D too long. Didn't do. And that's like a micro version <laughs> so that you can just get the quick check off the list because the number one thing with language learning is trying to beat the forgetting curve. And the forgetting curve is mm. scientifically researched that it basically says the longer you stop from studying, like if you stop studying for three days, but you only just started studying, you're going to forget everything. If you study for 30 days in a row and you don't study for three days, it's fine. If you study for 30 days and then you don't study for 30 days, you're going to forget everything. So basically the whole point is like the more consistent you are, the better the retention will be. So I addressed all of this mm-hmm. stuff in the challenge. So that's the 21 day language challenge under our teachable account, like joeclub.teachable.com. And everything that I'm building is basically to develop not only self-awareness, but language learning as well. I love that so much. I, th- I know for me personally, I really struggle with the consistency aspect of it because I I, I, it's probably a deeper thing I need to like get a, a bit more into and I'm like every day needs to look different. I hate repetition or consistency and this is not where that serves me. It serves me in other ways, but I think because it served me in other ways, it delayed me being consistent with some things like language learning. So I think the 21 day language challenge would be really helpful for me to just be like, okay, you have to do this every day. And uh, my buddy I was telling you about earlier who lives in the Netherlands, he posted the other day that he was on a thousand day streak on Duolingo and, and he's fluent now because he has, he has a Dutch roommate that he lived with through COVID too. So his roommate was like, we're going to get you fluent in Dutch. And I'm like, I can't believe you did a thousand days straight of Duolingo. Like if I hit a seven day streak, I'm like, <laughs> check me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Killing it. I'm currently on day 34, which is a big triumph for me as well. Like Elastic discipline is my is my uh, vibe. Yeah, that's actually shout out to my boyfriend who said it. He's so disciplined. And he's like, sometimes you just got to have elastic discipline where you're disciplined and then you stop and then you come back. So this is how I feel with language learning and journaling too. I love that. I'm definitely going to take on that term for all things in my life. Well, is there anything else that you want to share with the people? Any other things you want to shout out that you have to offer? Joe Club is opening its doors this week, which is very exciting. So we have hundreds of members around the world and I'm reopening the membership because we want new faces. So Joe Club is an option. JoeClub.world is our website. And we're always hosting random live journaling events. So even if people don't want to join, follow us on Instagram because we do prompts. I actually got the sweetest message today on Instagram and I'm like, Oh my God, this is what it's all about. Okay. Someone said, hi, I just wanted to message you because a journaling prompt on one of your accounts years ago inspired me to start writing again. We went to the same high school. I was in some classes with your older sister. So I've been following you for years and don't specifically recall which post it was. But anyway, long story short, my writing turned into a fiction novel and I'm publishing it for release tomorrow. And I wanted to share it with you. Because without seeing your post, I don't know if I would have gotten it done. Also, I'm, a, I'm subscribed to Joe Club and have downloaded Pimsleur. Like all these such sweet messages where I'm just like, oh my God, like that's the power of spreading goodness into the world that it becomes this butterfly effect of goodness. And so I want to do that not only with journaling, but with journaling in different languages. I love that. Just gave me goosebumps that a journal prompt led someone to, you know, and also I wonder too, sometimes like, if that's just lying dormant in someone's spirit, or if it actually prompted them to be like, Hey, maybe I could, if I can write a prompt and that sounds pretty good. And I enjoy doing that. Maybe there's a book inside of me. I mean, that's wild that a prompt led them to have this published novel. And it's all because yeah, you put that out into the world and decided to build this community. That's amazing. I was going to ask you too, is, um, I feel like maybe I saw this on Instagram. Maybe I'm making it up. Do you host Joe Club in different languages too, or is that mainly in English? So this is the really exciting thing. Joe Club Fluent was just launched as well, which is an add-on that unlocks two journaling sessions for language learners. So it's going to be like a a melting pot of languages. And then in the future, I'll do Joe Club French, Joe Club Italian, Joe Club Spanish when we have more members. So that's the future. And I think anybody who's a part of Joe Club or Joe Club Fluent or 
gets fluentish or just like follows me on whatever social media platform. I just want to help them be great as I am great. Like, it's just like a growth, you know, actually a few years ago, I decided that I didn't want to post content for content's sake anymore, which was very different than my first seven years on the internet. I had this YouTube channel with over a million subscribers and that channel was very much like we're posting to post, like we're posting Mm -hmm. for the sake of posting. It wasn't, I'm posting because I'm practicing. It wasn't like I'm posting the documentation of a journey to becoming something more. And then when I started my new channel and when I started this whole new chapter after the Netflix show, I was like, I think it's kind of a waste of everybody's time and especially my effort to just make like the get morning, get ready with me morning routine. Like who gives a shit about that? Right. Like if I'm spending time editing a video, it's going to be to better myself in, in more than just getting more eyeballs and followers like I wanted to inspire people but I want to also just show my show my work yeah I think that also adds value too I know as I don't create a lot of like very regular content like I just have a hard time committing to doing something like that but also similar reasons like if I don't feel like it's something people would actually enjoy or get something out of it feels like a waste of time and I always appreciate when I follow creators who feel like they've really taken the time to make something thoughtful and haven't just again like reshared something that they created like years ago if it's not actually relevant to something that's happening now if it is that's a whole different story but if it's just like oh well I need to post so that I can stay in the algorithm and that it stays like things stay fresh because I'm like I've seen this already like what I'm it's wasting time so I appreciate that as someone who absorbs your content it always feels fun and fresh and educational but in a really like exciting way so keep doing what you're doing yay thank you so much Danny (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh my gosh Joe thank you so much for being here I'm so excited to finally meet you virtually I hope we get to meet over in Europe at some point and I'm so grateful you took the time to chat with us on first time for everything today All right, guys, so we know what we got to do. We got to get on learning the languages that we have been putting off or have just not been committing to. I always struggle with consistency, but I'm going to take advantage of a code that Joe gave me for us that I'm going to link in the show notes to Pimsleur, which is the program that she personally uses to learn languages. You can also get Joe's language journal, Fluentish, which is available for pre-order now. I'm going to grab one for myself for Spanish and for Dutch. And you should grab one for you or for the language enthusiast in your life. You should sign up for her 21 day language challenge. You should join Joe Club. You should just generally surround yourself with this woman's presence because it will make you better. So if you want to follow Joe on Instagram, you can do that at Joe. J-O underscore Franco, F-R-A-N-C-O. You can follow me on Instagram at Danny Official, D-A-A-N-I Official, or or over on TikTok for all things podcast at F-T-F-E Pod. First Time for Everything is produced by Two Sheila's Productions, and our theme song, Closer, is performed by me, written by me in the Royal Foundry, and produced by the Royal Foundry. Thank you so, so much for listening, and remember, it is never too late for your first time. Thank you.